Good afternoon, everybody. It has been a while since I have done a lesson. I've been struggling with, you know, insecurities and not being good enough and such and such and such and such. But, you know, God always looks out for us and makes sure we know he loves us and he's always there. He, he never leaves. So... Anyways, today's lesson is when you're feeling less than love, meaning when you feel like you're not good enough to be loved or you're not good enough to love somebody. So, I mean, everybody since the day we were born um, are searching for love. You know, a baby wants his mother's love or his, her mother's love or we're searching to love somebody. We were meant to love. It's actually not a bad thing. But what is a bad thing is Satan twists love and starts to make it something it's not. And um, when that happens, people get hurt. And there's people out there, you know, they seem like they don't have any love or, or they don't think they're good enough for love. And that's just because of the sin in the world. You know, they've gotten, they've gotten turned away. They, they've gotten hurt by their parents, by somebody they're close to. I mean, we all deal with different things you know I've dealt with sexual assault and people have dealt with abuse and everybody goes through their own struggle and it can cause somebody to shut down and not to love I know I went through my own phase where you know I didn't want to feel anything because I had gotten hurt so much so I didn't show love and I didn't accept love I still have an issue accepting love sometimes but it's all a process um, but yeah Satan has tainted love it's become about sex and about self you know, either people want sex or they want to know what somebody can do for them. If somebody can't do something for them, then they don't want anything to do with it. And that's not what love was intended for. One thing I've always learned in uh, in church and throughout my studies is in the Bible and other languages, love had more than one name. Like in the American language love is love you know it could mean something minuscule it can mean something great but in the original hebrew language there's i'm pretty sure it's hebrew if i'm wrong i'm sorry but there's three words for love it's eros philos and agape eros is, is the kind of love that satan has twisted love into it's, it's desire longing selfishness sexual it's all those kind of things and philos is you know, the kind of love you have for your family or your bestie or, you know, whatever. But the thing about those two loves is they will leave you hurt, you know, because your family's going to hurt you. Your family's going to disappoint you. Same with your friends. And Nero's love is just so shallow that there's nothing it can do besides hurt you. So that's when we come to what God intended love to be and that's an agape love it's a it's a love that is selfless and knows no bounds I mean God sacrificed his son so that we can have a chance at life that's a love that has no bounds so the main chapter we're going to focus on today is John 4 7 through 1 it talks about what God intended love to be it says knowing God through love Dear friends, let us love one another, because love is from God, and everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. The one who does not know love does not know God, because God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his one and only son into the world so that we might live through him. Love consists in this. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. I probably pronounced that word wrong, but oh well. <laughs> Dear friends, if God loved us in this way, we must also love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God remains in us and his love is perfected in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he in us. He has given us assurance from his spirit. And we have seen and we testify 
that the Father has sent his Son as the world's Savior. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and he in God. And we have come to know and to believe the love of that God has for us. God is love, and the one who remains in love remains in God, and God remains in him. And this love is perfected with us, so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment, for we are as he is in this world. There is no fear in love. Instead, perfect love drives out fear because fear involves punishment. So the one who fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he loved us first. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he's a liar. For the person who does not love his brother he has seen cannot love God he has not seen. And we have this command from him. The one who loves God must also love his brother. So, first and foremost, verse 8 says, The one who does not love does not know God because God is love. So true love is God. God is, is love. That's why that boy cannot be filled unless we have true love because God is the only person that can fill the void that we have when we crave love or we crave to love. And um, it says this, you know, dear friends, if God loved us in this way, we must also want to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God remains in us and his love is perfected in us. So to keep that void filled, we have to keep loving us. And to keep loving us, we have to love others. So it, it, this is why we crave love, and this is why we crave to love, because we crave God. God put that craving in us when we were created so that he may have the chance to save us and to give us life if we choose to be. Because we deserve punishment. We deserve punishment for our sins but it says right here in verse 18 it says there is no fear in love instead perfect love drives out fear because fear involves punishment God took that punishment away when he gave us Jesus but the only way we can have God in, in us so that we can live fully is to have love and to love so it comes down to this, you know, how do we properly love? You know, the, like I said, media and Satan has just, the world has just tainted love so much that, you know, we've lost sight of what true love is. We, we, we're selfish about it. We, we think we can find love in sex. We think we can find love in drugs. We think we can find love in all these places. But... That's not the way it was intended to be. And when we get in a relationship, you know, it's all about what can this person do for me? What can this, what, what have you done for me lately? I think there's a whole song. What have you done for me lately? But <laughs> that's not, that's not how it was meant to be. In 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 5, it says, Love is patient, love is kind. Love does not envy, is not boastful is not conceited, does not act improperly, is not selfish, is not provoked, and does not keep record of wrongs. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in truth. It bear, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for languages, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know in part, yes, I'm going way past verse 5. <laughs> For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, I'm a God, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man or a woman, I put aside childish things. For now we see indistinctly as in a mirror, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I will know fully as I will fully know. Now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. That was through verse 13. That was 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 13. See, um, 
love never ends because God is love. God is the beginning, the end, you know, the alpha, the omega. So, that's why we have to know God in order to love. It says, love is patient, love is kind, love is not envy, not boastful, not conceited, not selfish, not provoked, doesn't keep records of wrongdoing, it finds no joy in unrighteousness. So that means if we're in behaviors that are not righteous, that are not godly, we are not in love. So how we live and what our actions are shows whether we have God in us or not, whether we have love in us or not, and whether we can love others properly. And then it says now three of these remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. See, faith and hope is for while we're on earth. We have faith in God. We have faith that God is coming. We have faith that God exists. We have faith that God loves us. And we have hope because he's given us a future. But once God comes, those two no longer need to be because everything will be known. And this is right here, you know, the partial will come to an end when the perfect comes. So we won't need faith. We won't need hope because he'll be here and the perfect will be here. And it says, but the greatest of these is love because God is love and it never ends. So how awesome is it to know that we can always have love in us and we can always love others because God is love and it'll never end. And it's something that we will have in our souls forever and ever. And we all, all have God's love. It's just a matter of accepting it and allowing God to fill that void. And one last thing about agape love is it's not about feelings, you know? That's another way love has been tainted, you know? It, it, it's become a feeling instead of an action, but love is a verb. And it's about what we are doing. God says, love your neighbors as you love yourself. It doesn't say like your neighbors. It says, love your neighbors as you love yourself. That means you don't have to like them, but we have to be like God. We have to love them. So that means we have to be patient. We can't hold their past above their head. You know, we can't keep records of wrongdoing. We can't act like we're better than them. We can't want something somebody else has. You know, that happens a lot. I, I hear throughout the Christian community, oh, well, you know, these people have this and they're not of God. They have the money, they have the husband, they have, you know, whatever. I've been guilty of it too. But that's not love because it says love does not envy. So our actions are not showing that in love, which is why we still have that void. And which is why we still feel empty because we don't have love in our hearts because we're not acting out love. We're not, we're not fulfilling that verb. And, you know, in 1 John 4, 7 through 21... says the one who loves God must also love his brother and there's many other places in the Bible where, where Jesus reiterates this and God reiterates this and um, Matthew 22 39 is one of these this is the greatest and the most important man the second is like this love your neighbor as you love yourself now this is gonna be my closing closing statement is love your neighbor as you love yourself God intended for us to love ourselves so in order to love others properly we have to love ourselves properly that means we have to be patient with ourselves that means we can't hold on to wrongdoings of ourselves you know the hardest thing for me is to forgive myself to let go of my wrongdoings so how can I properly love others if I can't properly love myself so the best place to start with love is loving yourself at home you know let go of your wrongdoings forgive yourself be patient with yourself and then once you start doing that when you go out around people you'll be able to do that you'll be able to be patient you'll be able to let go of the past you'll be able to do all these things and the more you do that the more you'll feel God's presence and the more that void will be filled so Keep love in your heart, keep God in your heart, and at the same time, love others, love yourself, and 
just remember love is a verb and not a feeling so even on those days when you feel like you know you can't you can't go on or you can't you, you feel depressed you feel sad you feel down on yourself remember love is a verb and remember first corinthians um 13 4 through 5 when you feel sad, when you're feeling down on yourself remember love is patient love is kind love does not envy is not boastful is not conceited is not selfish is not provoked and does not keep record of wrongdoing so when you're feeling sad when you're feeling down be kind to yourself be patient with yourself and remember the truth because it says love rejoices in the truth the truth is god loves us and has given everything for us and he He's given us hope and a future. So love yourself. Be kind to yourself. Be patient with yourself. And do the same for others.